You're walking down Fifth Avenue in New York City when you suddenly hear a rumbling. You think it's the subway. But as it turned out, the subways were off service that day. The rumbling continues, and you can also hear something swooshy, like dense underground water. Uh oh. Could it be the Earth's magma? Yes, in this hypothetical scenario, your ears are magically attuned to the sound of tectonic plates moving around deep underneath your feet. Congrats, you've achieved the hearing range of an elephant. With our normal set of ears, this would never be possible. Humans have an average hearing that ranges from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. That means you can hear something like a very low bass note or as loud as the buzzing of a mosquito flying right next to your ear. Our hearing is at its prime when we're young. A study from the University of New South Wales says that a child can hear up to 24 kilohertz. When we're young, we can hear extremely high-pitched sounds, but this tends to decrease once we get older. The maximum hearing capacity of an older person can go as low as 8 kilohertz. I mean, this person probably can't hear the birds chirping or even the beeping of their microwave. Sounds that vibrate in frequencies outside our hearing range are inaudible to most of us. These frequencies are called ultrasonic or infrasound. Remember when you could hear tectonic plates swooshing around? That's the best example of infrasound. But what is sound anyway? And can humans dream of expanding their hearing range? Let's start from the beginning. Sound is vibration. It's a wave that needs a medium through which it propagates. This medium can be air, for example, or gas, or even something liquid like water. Not so fun fact. If oxygen went missing from Earth's atmosphere, we wouldn't be able to hear anything. We would be able to speak, but since there was no medium for sound waves to travel through, we wouldn't be able to hear each other. Crazy, huh? Sound waves look pretty much like this. They'll look more hectic if what we're listening to is a high-pitched noise. That's because high-frequency sounds have a short wavelength. Or they'll look more chill if it's a low-frequency sound, since they travel in long wavelengths. The fascinating thing about sound is that life is not limited only to the sounds humans can hear. On the contrary, animals tend to have a wider hearing range than us. If we can only hear up to 20 kilohertz, our doggos can hear up to 45 kilohertz. Cats are even more ninja-like than dogs. They can catch frequencies as high as 60 kilohertz. They can hear a thunderstorm way before you can hear it, for example. That's why they're ducking for cover when there is seemingly nothing going on outside. But there's another important detail here. The world is noisy. Whether you're in the jungle or you're in New York City, there will always be a lot of noise surrounding you. If we heard all of those noises all of the time, it would be crazier than being a character at everything everywhere all at once. Trust me. So what does our brain do? It only chooses certain sounds to focus on. Let's visualize what I'm talking about here. Let's say you're waiting to cross a street at a busy intersection. There, your ears pick up the sound of engines, of loud honks, of airplanes flying above you, of the music coming from the burger deli on the corner. Phew! You get the picture. But probably your brain will focus on the sound of the traffic. Why? Because at that moment, it's the most important thing for your safety and survival. This is what we mean when we say our hearing is selective. If you were walking alone through a dense rainforest, your ears would pick up the intense sounds of the fauna around you. Birds, flying insects, mosquitoes, and the wind blowing through the trees. But your ears would be attentive to the sound of any real predators. I'm talking felines or snakes, for example. Now, the fun thing about sound is that if we change the medium, we change some of its laws. Above the surface, human hearing seems to be very limited. But if we go underwater, we can expand our hearing. According to National Geographic, 
divers can expand their hearing ranges underwater. If above ground we can only hear up to 20 kilohertz, underwater, a human can have the same hearing as a bat, something around 100 kilohertz. And no, ocean water doesn't turn us into superhumans. We don't exactly know why this happens, but scientists have two guesses. First, sound travels differently through the water. Secondly, it has to do with the way our ears receive sound and how our brain interprets it. You see, this is how our ears look on the inside. We have the outer part, which works as a type of funnel. They capture the vibrating wavelengths of sound. After the waves pass through this funnel, they meet the structure of our inner ear. Our eardrum receives the waves of sound, which activates tiny bones that connect to the cochlea. The cochlea is this part right here that looks like the shell of a snail. It's made up of a saltwater-like fluid. At the innermost center of this cochlea, we have even tinier hairs that vibrate according to the frequency of sound we are receiving. Some hairs will only be activated by high-pitched sounds, while other hairs will be activated with lower notes. In case you are wondering why our hearing becomes worse with old age, it's due to these hairs. Humans are born with a set of hairs and in case they're damaged, they don't grow back. They're extremely sensitive, and if you keep exposing them to loud noises, you will damage your hearing for life. On the bright side, these hairs are so sensitive that some of them can detect ultrasonic vibrations. Usually, we don't activate them very much, but scientists believe that we can do so underwater. If National Geographic is right and we can hear frequencies of up to 100 kilohertz, this means we can hear the same way as dolphins. And if we can do that, this also means we could use echolocation to guide our way through the water, just like dolphins do. An echolocation is a form of navigation through sound. To put it simply, it's like seeing with your ears. How is that possible, you might ask? Well, you've heard of sonars, right? It's an instrument ships use to search for things underwater. A sonar emits very fast sound pulses that bounce off the seafloor and back. This way, they can detect the depths of the water, they can find shipwrecks, and even discover geological formations. That's pretty much what dolphins do to locate themselves. They emit clicking sounds to scan the water for food and other animals. Whichever way sound bounces back to them will help them identify what's in the water ahead and around them. Such fascinating creatures, these dolphins. Now we've talked about ultrasonic sounds, but what about infrasounds? Infrasounds are low range frequencies, anything ranging below 20 Hertz. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the same hearing range as an elephant. We can't hear an ant making its way through an underground tunnel, for example. And since our ears aren't programmed to hear these frequencies, constant exposure to infrasounds may damage our hearing. There are many things that vibrate below the average human hearing capacity. The most common in our daily lives are wind turbines, the constant roar of a crowded football stadium, or even standing too close to a sound box in a hip-hop concert. If you want your hearing to have a long life, do your best to avoid long exposure to these scenarios. Most natural phenomena vibrate at an infrasound level. So if you were skiing in the Alps and could hear outside our normal range, you might be able to predict an avalanche. That'd be cool, huh? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.